Hello, my 3D printing online CAD tech class crazy friends. This is a new thing, but I think it's going to be exciting. It's going to be a fun adventure for us here. We are still going to endeavor to take things from your brain and bring them to the real world. It's going to be awesome. And I think in overcoming this challenge, we're going to learn new skills. We're going to get new experiences and, and really get benefits from it that we never thought we could have. So we're going to rise to the challenge and have a rocking good time. So... With that said, here we are, fun with tech class. We know that we're dealing with 3D printing. We recognize, hopefully, this 3D printer. We've had it in class a bunch, bunch, bunch of times. Before we dive into the crazy cadness, though, let us review how 3D printing works. My friends, some of you may remember, but if you don't, that's totally cool. The fancy terms for 3D printing are either fused deposition modeling or additive manufacturing. I like that part, additive manufacturing. The first part of additive is add. We're giving something to, we're contributing, we're in many ways growing it. So think about how Legos, or in this case, soft serve work. We build by layers. We're continually adding. So thinking of really a soft serve ice cream um, dispenser essentially is a 3D printer. It's making something in three dimensions. It's just delicious. So it builds it. You see our layer, 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 layer as it gets progressively taller, taller, taller. Likewise, when we're building by layers, looking at this cake, we, we, we use a picture of this cake a lot. This cake, sadly, was not made with a 3D printer, but it is a fantastic illustration of something that has been created using layers. So this cake was made, red layer, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, separately, and then they were stacked together on top of each other, and then our cake got progressively shorter and shorter and shorter my friends. Checking to see if we're listening. No, it got taller and taller and taller. That's what happens when we build by layers. We are adding layers. We're adding a little bit every time and it gets a bit taller. That is the fundamental principle of additive manufacturing, which again is one of our fancy terms for 3D printing. Parts of the printer. If we want to understand 3D printing, the best way to do it is to look at these three main components. I like to say that we follow the filament. The filament, as we know, is that is that really sort of almost wire spaghetti looking type stuff that makes all of our really cool 3D printing devices. So our filament begins in the cartridge. And let's see if you guys can holler out to either mom or dad or just to the universe there what comes after the cartridge. The filament flows from the cartridge to the blank, blank, blank. You got it. The extruder. After the extruder, it ends up, if you can't remember where it ends up, think about where do you end up every night? You end up in your bed. Our 3D printed design, the filament goes from the cartridge through the extruder to the print bed. Keeping that in mind, here's an example of one of our cartridges. Our cartridges control, I'm sorry, hold our filament. The filament can be up to 240 meters long once it's extruded. That's two and a half football fields, which is bonkers. But that is what our stuff comes from. Everything, the cards we've made, the little Pokemon creatures and things that way and everything we're going to make here in the future. The filament begins in the cartridge and comes through then the extruder. The extruder is like a nozzle. Think about a garden hose. Water comes out of the nozzle at the end. Same thing for our 3D printer and our filament comes out of this super tiny, it's, it's literally the size of a pin, pinhole nozzle here, the extruder. Now, to understand what makes 3D printing possible and makes this so awesome is the extruder is arguably the most important piece. The extruder acts like, well, it doesn't act like Goldilocks. It acts like the porridge in that tale where that awful criminal Goldilocks lady broke into that nice bear family house. Think about what she was doing. When she broke into a house, she was an intruder. Intruder. In this case, filament is coming out of this, which makes it an extruder. So think about X like exit. The filament comes out. Now, getting back to that awful criminal Goldilocks, who should be locked up for taking that nice bear family's meal. When she tried the first porridge, it was what? Too hot. When she tried the next porridge, it was too cold. She had to settle on the one that was just right. The extruder, and this is super fun, the extruder gets our filament into that, I'm going to use air quotes here, you can't see them, Goldilocks zone. It gets our filament to be just right. You guys remember, we've talked about this in class. When our filament is too cold, 
the plastic is really hard. Any plastic you guys are touching doesn't burn your hands. It is, it is really hard when it is cold. So thinking the same way as we did when we were little and you guys were playing with Play-Doh, you didn't want to use super hard dried out Play-Doh. You wanted soft Play-Doh. Well, think about it. how do we get the filament? How do we get the plastic to be soft? We apply heat, but there's a problem. If we apply too much heat, then that filament, well, it melts. It melts too much. It becomes a big puddle of goo. You can't build with a puddle of goo. If it keeps heating too much beyond there, it likely will separate into its base components, probably be toxic, and then eventually catch on fire. Those are bad things. So we need our filament, not too hot, not too cold, right in the Goldilocks zone. When we're using ABS, a type of styrene, it is between 200 and 230 degrees. Super fun. Our extruder now, getting into the D part of 3D printing, our extruder is going to travel on two axes. On the main printers we usually bring in, it moves on the X and the Z axis and moves up and down and then also side to side. Now that might change, but it's always going to work in two of our three axes. It take a second. Let's review our axes, our axes here. So the 3D printer can either move on, well, I'm sorry, the 3D printer itself is going to move on all three of these axes. The extruder will move on the Y or the X axis, and oftentimes the print bed then is going to move on the Z axis, that is up and down. Anything that we are able to touch, your pen, the computer, the desk, your hair, uh, your nose, a uh, cup in front of you, those are all three-dimensional objects. They have up and down and side to side and front to back, X, Y, and Z. Now, before we dive into our fun CAD stuff, let's take a minute in case mom and dad are there with you. We need to talk about how we are going to get online, how we're going to get into CAD. So mom and dad, if you want to jump in here, if you haven't done it already, we're going to talk about logging on to Tinkercad. If you have and Tinkercad's ready to go, super great and awesome. Go ahead and skip forward a little bit to where we're going to talk about making the table. Um, some of our friends have done this, but we want to make sure we're able to get everybody on page. So for our friends who have not, Tinkercad is the online CAD program that we use. Super fun. And let's talk about how we can actually log in and get ourselves started with it. We're going to use a browser. You can either use Microsoft Edge, which I think they have, actually have a new logo now. Google Chrome is probably the best. Uh, Google, I'm sorry, Firefox totally great. Opera will also work as well. I'm an opera man myself, but uh, Google Chrome is a pretty solid one there. So once we have done that, you'll want to go in your browser to tinkercad.com. Hello, my tech class families. Um, real quick for all of our really, really fun work we're going to do at home. We need to set up a Tinkercad account for you. We use our own during the classes, but in these times, not really an option. So what I want everybody to do here is go to Tinkercad.com. So walking us through, your screen should look like this one here. And we want to go ahead and start tinkering and create a personal account. You can either sign up with email or sign in with a Google account. Email is super easy. Um, I'm going to give myself a fictitious birthday here just so you guys can see what our process is. And we'll walk through what else we would like to do later. Um, so I'm going to give ourselves kids.tech.ga55. and just creating our password so and you've got to agree to this now one thing that is important this account has been made in your name as the parent and as the adult the Tinkercad uh, website Autodesk they do have child accounts available if you want to make one for your child uh, I recommend that you do. There is the Child Online Privacy Protection Act, which states that this is an account that you are creating and you will supervise your child to use um, rather than just giving them this one. Those are just some of the federal regulations you are free to do as you wish, but I uh, always want to make sure that we're making everybody aware of everything that, everything that goes into this. Now, once you get them, uh, here's one of our fun tutorials actually we'll go ahead and skip that once you get logged on you will simply go here and create new design 
and that is exactly what it sounds like. One of the things that we're going to be doing with your children is walking them through our CAD lessons and eventually actually doing some other designs. Say there's something that we have successfully created and made, we, as in me, <laughs> Mr. Ray, are going to 3D print that and either deliver them to the schools, which will, fingers crossed, open very soon, or worst case, mail to you as well. We're going to do a lot of projects and a lot of things. In order for me to get that, we're going to talk about that in our next step. But this was first how we create an account, and then you just start a new design, and our kids will rock and roll from there. Hello. All right. So some of our friends have done this project previously, but I want to do it again. This is fantastic pro um, practice, and it is a it's it's a pretty sophisticated and advanced thing. So this might take some time, and I definitely want to get extra reps. So the goal for today is we want to build a table. We want to make a table, and then you guys are going to send me the link for it, and I will print them up. I probably have a lot of these already for you guys. I'm going to print those up as well. But what I want to talk about first is why this is important. Um, you have tables in your house. You don't necessarily need another table, but that's not necessarily, that's not actually what this is, although we're calling it a table. It's super small. Most importantly is this is a lesson. This is an illustration of how you can make something out of individual components and pieces. This is almost like unlocking a strength and power on a new character. This is unlocking something in your brain. You can make so much more if you can have the parts. A great example is IKEA furniture. Some of you guys have had furniture that you can actually put together yourself. IKEA is a furniture company and they will send you an entire room full of furniture, but it's all stacked up in its component pieces. It's phenomenally small. It is efficiency of design, efficiency of production. Once you are able to get the idea that you can make something out of individual parts, it doesn't need to be as large. You can get so much more complex. You can get so much more creative. This is a fantastic exercise that I hope unlocks a lot of this neat stuff for you. So what we're going to do first is we will play the video sort of as a general, general overview, walking through step by step for all of this. Then once the video is over, we will have slide by slide of what you need to do specifically in detail to get this going. So let's go ahead and have that. All right, super awesome 3D printing crazy texture people. We're going to make a table today. Uh, tables aren't usually very exciting, but this is an excellent exercise as we're getting closer to finishing and doing your final projects. The real, real lesson for this that you're going to take away is the ability and the importance of making something with several parts. The idea then is you could do a single solid brick type design like this that's a bit simple and not terribly elegant. We can get a lot more out of your time on my 3D printers and your own creativity if you have the idea that you can assemble something out of independent parts. And that's where we've come up with the idea for the table. So you've seen the picture of it already. So what we're going to do is walk through some of the basic steps and then we'll go through step by step in the class. So the first thing, we get our handy dandy super duper box. We're also going to use our ruler makes life a lot easier, a lot, a lot easier. So first we want to make the flat part of the table. So my dimensions we talked about 20 millimeters front to back. So we're going to consider that our Y axis. We're going to want to be 50 millimeters here. So I'm just going to type that in, blam. And then for the Z axis, I want it to be thin. We don't need a thick table, just one right there. So that is our first basic step. Next, we want to make the holes that we're going to insert the legs. So what we do there is get another handy dandy box. And my dimensions is this time I only want it to be 10 millimeters on the Y axis. And then on the X axis, we're going to go two. The height doesn't really matter because what we're going to do is simply make this into a hole. And then we're going to double that. So we're going to copy and paste. Fun, fun exercise. A couple ways to do it. I like the keyboard shortcut. Control C and now Control V 
bam. So we have that guy there, and I like to use the arrow keys. Notice I'm not using my mouse. I'm using the arrow keys to sort of nudge that guy over a little bit. We can worry about alignment and other stuff a bit later. I'm not as concerned about that for this right now. It's going to be relatively small and pretty stable. So we can just drag this guy here and then drag this guy over here. Now we don't want it to be at the very end. We want to have some kind of basic structural stability. So when we're right around here, I like to have a little bit, a little bit in that. We can sort of eyeball that and we can use the alignment tool if you want to get super fancy schmancy. I'm not as worried about that right now. So then we can group these together as we know about making our negative spaces and Hocus Pocus Abracadabra our tabletop now has a place for the legs. Now, how are we going to make those crazy legs? First, let's grab our roof. And thinking back to our rotational challenge, kind of fun how these things come together, I am going to stand the roof up. Click, click, click. Notice here it's at 90 degrees. 90 degrees. Now I'm going to want this to be level with the work plane. So a nice little trick that I'm going to do here is I click on it hit the letter D and bam, it pops that bad boy right up. Now I do have measurements that I want this to be. Remember as we've gone through, we wanna make sure we're hitting our precise tolerances. So this time for the Y axis, I'd like it to be 50 millimeters. Kind of long there, we're gonna keep the X axis at 20 and on the Z axis, we're gonna make it just one millimeter thick. So we want to think about that. So the holes that I did here, we did two millimeters wide. This is going to be one millimeter thick because that's going to go there. Kind of makes sense. So can't just have one leg, but we also don't want to go through all the processing again. So we want to be lazy. So click on this bad boy, keyboard shortcut, control C, control V, and blammo. So we have this here. Now we'd like for you to do some aspect of personalization. So we're gonna add some letters to it. We're gonna go for your initials. I'm gonna go for my initials, R and then M. And I'm gonna make both of those holes as I need you to do as well. All right, and then we can group these guys together now, one final thing that I want you to do, since I'm going to be making a whole ton of these, I need to have efficiency of space. So once we have our legs, what I want us to do is rotate these 90 degrees like this and slide that here. And I think you see what I'm going to do. So I want to rotate this one the opposite direction. So right here, because the idea is I'm going to print these up on my, on my own printers. I want to get as many of them in at one time. So here is your table. If this is printed correctly, it'll look like the picture we have there. And we're going to have the understanding that you can actually make things out of parts. We can assemble something and therefore you're using a lot less material and getting a lot more bang for your buck with regards to your design. Let's go ahead and do it step by step together. All of the yay. So here we go, step by step. What I'll want you to do, take your time. There is no rush for this. If you need more time on one of these screens, just hit pause and do it at your own leisure and ready to go. Hit play again. If you're tired of my voice, hit mute. I won't blame you and I won't frankly know. Ha ha. So step number one, get yourself a box. Step number two, get the ruler. Click on that bad boy and drag it over. Step number three is using the ruler, we want to have these precise measurements. So we want our tabletop here to be 20 millimeters on the y-axis, 50 millimeters on the x-axis, and one millimeter on the z-axis. Go ahead and give that a try. Pause the video as needed. I'm not going to click to the next one yet until I count down from five to give you time to rush and hit the pause button. Five, four, three, two, one, and moving on. Step numero quattro. So we have our tabletop. Now we need to make the holes for the legs. So you will get another box. And then using our ruler, you will make that box in the dimensions, 10 millimeters in the y-axis, a measly two millimeters 
side to side in the x-axis. And then the height doesn't matter as much, but let's leave it at 20 millimeters for the z-axis. If you need hit pause, go ahead. I'll count down from five before moving to the next slide. Five, four, three, two, one, and moving on. Once you have one of those bad boys, we're going to use our copy and paste skill. You can see it in the upper left hand corner for Tinkercad. There's a little icon that says copy and then paste, or you can use control C and control V. We'll review that in a little bit as well. So ideally then you want to have these two, your screen should look just like mine. Take your time. If you need time to do it, go ahead and hit pause in the video now. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. If you don't need to pause it, we're going to be moving on from there. No worries if you do. Here's our next step. Once you have those two tables, I'm sorry, those two holes, <laughs> those two pillars, we need to make them into holes. Easy for easy for you to say okay so click on each of those and click on the color icon make them into holes moving on if, if you need more time i'll give it to you i'm going to count down from five before moving to the next slide hit pause if you need it five four three two one and your screen should look like this it's not quite done yet because remember we have to group them together so you select them both going around and then once you have grouped them your tabletop should look just like this before I move on to the next slide I'm going to count down from five again five four three two one moving on making the legs this is the one that trips everybody up or not everybody but almost everybody so once we have our roof, we're going to make that into some legs. The trick is, though, stand it up 90 degrees. We did this a number of weeks ago in our rotational challenge. So that's a big part of our challenge, an important thing for us to do right now. So let's give that a try. Counting down from five before moving to our next slide. If you need to hit pause, do it now. Five, four, three, two, one. Now, using our ruler, this, this needs to be super exact. So we want it 20 by 50 by 1. And then you want to copy and paste it so that we have two of them because it's tough to make it stand up with just one leg. So this is what we want. Using our ruler, we want to be precise. 50 by 20 by 1. Moving on. Once you've done that, go ahead and do your initials and make them into holes. And take our time. If we're struggling a bit or we got to go back for some steps, this is the wonderful thing is you just mash a button and there you are. So before I move on to our next slide, this is our goal. We want your table to look like this. And I'm going to count down from five. Five, four, three, two, and one. Once you are satisfied with your design, you got to get it to me. So mom and dad, if you're around, you can either email me your username and password not advisable, but we can certainly do that. Another way to do it is to actually just send us a link to this design, and then we're able to go in and make any adjustments as needed, but also and especially simply download it and crank it out, which is super fun. So if you haven't seen it before, the way that we get the link is really pretty simple and straightforward. Let's give it a shot here. The last thing here, moms and dads, uh, as I said in the previous slide, once your child has created something, we need the design in order to print it. And the plan is then that we'll print it and either drop it off at school, fingers crossed very, very soon, or drop it in the mail to you. And we can do a lot of projects this way. This is going to unlock a ton of creativity for us, which is so cool. You can, as I said previously, either give us your username and password, or a better way really is to simply send us this link, because then we're able to alter it and make any, any adjustments that have to happen and then download it and print it on our machines. So what we'll do here, we're not going to export it, we're going to go to send to, scrolling all the way down, you want to invite us to actually work on this. So for that, you're just going to generate a new link, copy the link, and then email it to me. Uh, we might eventually come up with a better system for this, but this is really the best we have right now, and I think this will work really well. So expect our lessons here coming at you uh, fast and very exciting, and we're really looking forward to getting a lot of cool stuff rolling and done here. Okay, 
So that's behind us. Let's work on our next project of making a box. Making a box. This is going to, it runs well, around to make a box. Making a house. We're going to start with a box. Um, this is a great one because it's a project a lot of our friends do, and it is easy to wrap our head around. And this, the way we're going to do it, is going to incorporate some of our more advanced skills. Fantastic practicing stuff. And again, we're hoping it is going to unlock a lot of the creative potential and abilities inside of our brains. I'm going to go through the individual steps. You can do them step by step if you want here or just kind of watch them and hear them and go through them. I'm going to have a video again that'll play showing me doing this whole thing and go back and forth as needed. And this is a sort of a new process for all of us, but I think it's going to work pretty well this way. Let's give it a try. So first we start with a box. Then we will make a copy of the box. There's a couple ways to do that, either hitting Control-C and Control-V or using the copy and paste function on the upper left-hand side of your Tinkercad screen. When you have when you have the second box, we want to make it into a hole. I'm going to slow down a little bit here just to give you guys a chance in case you want to pause each frame. You want to do it step by step, that's fine. So once we have copy and pasted our box, we don't want two boxes, we just want one, and we want to hollow it out. So the second box, you're going to click on it, and the same way that you change the color, you're going to turn that into a hole. Now, before I go to the next slide, I'm going to count down from five in case you want to pause. Five, four, three, two, one. Now, the second box, it can't be the same size. It's got to be just a little bit smaller because we're going to use that to hollow that bad boy out. So we want to make the whole box smaller and taller on the x and y axis it helps a little bit that way so that's what that's your screen should look like mine counting down from five again in case you need to pause five four three two one next let's put them together using the alignment tool is a great way to do it you can eyeball it if you want i'd prefer you align them that's where we use these little sort of dots here so get them lined up that way Counting down from five in case you need to pause before we go to the next slide. Five, four, three, two, one. And group them together. Once you have, we now have a hollowed out box or another way to think of it, we have walls of a house. Super crazy cool. Counting down from five in case you need to pause. Five, four, three, two, one. Every house has to have a roof. You can eyeball it, dragging it up, but we know there's a much better way using our temporary work plane. So, and I'll show that in our next one as well and in, in the video. Get the temporary work plane up there, grab a roof, and then expand and extend it. And that's pretty much how our super house looks. Before moving on to our next frame, or I'm sorry, our next, <laughs> our next slide, going to count down from five again. Five, four, three, two, one. Moving on. Now, here's a video where I'm going to narrate doing what we had just seen. So if you want to watch that and go back, have at it. Let's take a look. Super awesome 3D printing CAD friends. Working on making a house in CAD. Practicing some of our super fine skills. We've gone through the basic steps. So here you get to see them in practice. Going to grab a box. At any point, if you guys want, go ahead and pause this video and take your time. Let's get it all figured out. So we've grabbed a box. I want to make the box relatively large, something kind of fun for us to work with. Doesn't have to be a precise size at this time. Now, we have one box. We need to do some hocus pocus, abracadabra, magic type stuff and make it into two boxes. I could get another box this way and adjust the size and do something like this, but I don't want to. I'm going to delete that. Instead, I want to make an exact copy of this one. We've talked about this before, but it is a skill that is fantastic to practice and get straight. We're going to copy it, copy and paste. There's a couple of ways. We can use keyboard shortcuts, hold down Control C and then Control V and bam. That's one way, but some of our friends aren't quite sure where the control button is. So Tinkercad has a method built in. Over here in this corner here, it says copy and I'm going to click on that. Now I've copied it and you may be wondering why don't I see anything? Well, because the copy is sort of waiting there in the universe for us to give it instruction what to do. So we need to go to this next guy over here that says paste. Watch what happens when I click paste. One, two, three, BAM! So here is that other guy. 
I got this house, this box, I'm sorry, for our house because, well, I don't want to make two houses. I still just want to make one. I want to hollow out this box. We have worked before. I've seen some of you guys try to build houses and your brains are working super overtime, which is so cool. And you're trying to make walls, but we got an easier way to make the walls. So I've taken this copy. Now I want to make this copy just a little bit smaller, not super small, but just a little smaller. And I want to make it a little tall. So make it small and make it tall. Now I want to make it into a hole our negative space. I want to get this over to this. Now you could just sort of eyeball it this way and that'll work. I especially want us to practice our alignment skills. So I'm going to take my mouse over here, hold down the left button and drawing my little box around these guys. And now watch when I let go, they've both been selected. I go up here and again, if I'm moving too fast, pause the video, bring it back. Let's take our time. This is cool stuff. Let's make sure we get it right. I will click on align, bam. And here we've got those handy dandy black dots. I'm gonna click on this guy. So that aligns them in one axis and this will align them in another axis. So I have gotten a lot closer to my negative space, but I don't have it yet. My next final step is to group them together. So again, I take my cursor and mouse over here in space, hold down the left button, drag across here. And once I group them, I now have a house that someone could theoretically go into. One thing my house does not have though is a roof. The easy way to get the roof, like we've shown in those instructions, is to use a temporary work plane. Whenever I grab a shape, it comes out here on this work plane, but I want to get it up here. So I will go here to the right hand side, work plane, drag this over, and when it's on top, watch this, bam! I now have a temporary work plane. Scrolling down, I come over here. What does a house need? A roof! So I'm going to drag this roof guy over here and then I'll expand it and extend it here. And we theoretically have a house to get rid of this temporary work plane. You just go over here to says work plane, drag it out here to space and go click and it is gone. So that is how we have now made our house. Cool. Let's have at it. All right, friends. So that is how we make our house. Go ahead and pause this video, jump back and forth. And once you get these skills done a little bit, we can start to create and get a little wild and crazy. Now, moving on from there, I'm not going to have a video for this one necessarily, but this is some extra practice if you want. So making this, first of all, uses a lot of our skills where we have the pyramid and then we invert it and then we get it up there and then we align it, grouping it, locking it together. Locking together is, is key, getting it to group. Then what I want you to try is copy and paste it and then get a temporary work plane and see what happens when you see if you can get it to paste in different places. You can get it to paste on the temporary work plane. That's sort of a success and a neat way to exercise this skill. Go at it, guys. We have given you a ton to chew on and to digest and to get things churning in your brains. Let's keep up our super fantastic goal. Our, our mission is to empower you and get you to be able to take something from your brain and bring it to the real world. And we've done that today, and it is rocking. Let's have at it, guys.